I painted it that way. You're not hurt, are you? Of all the stupid elephants I've ever seen, you two take the cake. Why can't you look where you're going? Well, we were looking where we were going. We're just trying to find I the... thought so. A couple of hayseeds from New Rochelle. No, we're not. We're from Boston. Hicks. Hicks. Look at me. Just look at me. We are looking at you. Look at my hat. You must be all up. I wouldn't say that. Look at my hair. Look what you've done to it. It's like spun gold. My dress is all dirty. It's more charming than the latest Parisian frocks. And that's not all. Just... Your eyes? Even angry, they put the stars to shame. Oh, let her go, Steve. I'll go in and see if this is Lulu Varden. How did you hear about Lulu Varden went in Boston? Engines. They spread it by Tom Tom. They sent up smoke signals from hill to hill. Oh, so you're Indian. Madam, you are at the moment conversing with maestro Johnny Bennett, the great young composer. And with Mr. Stephen Davis of Chestnut Hill, the great young artist. How do you do? I never heard of you. Well, uh, nobody ever heard of it. Ah, but they will. Our fame will spread throughout the land. We'll take New York by storm. We'll take London. We'll take Paris. I'll take a ride. A nice neighborhood. I think I'm going to like it. Professor Garibaldi wrote that you boys were coming. He said some very nice things about your music, Mr. Ed Bennett. Your ears must have burned from the nice things he said about you. Oh, bless his heart. He's such a darling. And only you talked about the very same studio I reserved for you. Are you a composer too, Mr. Davis? Me? I'm too weak to carry a tune. Oh. Uh, Steve's an artist. Good. This studio has a fine north light, just right for an artist. Well, that's peachy, Mr. Spartan. Uh, Everyone calls me Lulu. Everyone calls me Steve. I'm Johnny. Oh, I'm very happy to know you both. Uh, the price will be uh, $6 a week double. Uh, pay your own gas and no cooking. Here's a month in advance. I'll pay you back, Steve, as soon as you sell my first song. Um, what kind of a struggling artist are you? Well, he's a different kind, ma'am. You see, he's struggling not to be a banker. Oh. Well, Steve Lulu, my old man, is the head of one of the oldest banking houses in Boston. He sort of planned on having me follow in his footsteps. Oh, but you always wanted to be an artist, eh? Well, not exactly, but it was one way of getting to Greenwich Village to have fun. <laughs> Lulu. Oh, well, yes, I love these. Well, here's a couple of dollars on account. I played at a dance last night. Oh, Peter, look at those cuffs. How do you expect to get jobs that way? Here, take this money and go buy yourself a new shirt. Well, thanks, Lulu. Oh, Edgar, how did the audition for the symphony go? They turned me down. Now where are you going? Well, I'm not skipping, Lulu. I was going to... It's a wonderful violin. Worth money. Mm-hmm. I thought I saw that pawn shop gleam in your eye. Don't be silly. Go back to your room. How are you going to audition without it? I told you the audition was... Oh, I mean the next audition, the one when they won't turn you down. Oh, thanks, Lulu. <laughs> Say, what kind of a landlady are you, anyhow? What do you mean? Well, you're supposed to harangue and berate and <laughs> foreclose mortgages. Even <laughs> cast people out in the snow. Oh, oh, next week, East Lynn. No, boys, this is a house of artists. Some are singers, some are writers, and some are painters. But all are artists. I was one myself. A great one. And so you see, without art, we have nothing to live by. People pay when they can, and if they can't, well, they're still artists, and I still love them. Lulu, you are a very nice girl. Will you marry me? I think I'm a little old for a June bride. Ask me next January. <laughs> well, here we are. I had your things brought up just as soon as they arrived by express, and your trunks are in the bedroom. Right. And here's the piano. Oh, I do hope it's in tune. Well, I'll leave you boys to get settled now. 
Bring your laundry stick up on Tuesdays and the gas meter's just outside the door when the lights go off. When you leave, the lights will go out. <laughs> now then, just drop a quarter in the meter. Come out this way and I'll show you how. Oh, put your coin in there. Now that would give you one revolution. Oh, by the way, Steve. Yes? Uh, a young lady telephoned you, and Miss Radford, she wants you to call just as soon as you arrive. Her number's on the telephone pad downstairs. Well, thanks, Lulu. You don't waste much time, do you? Oh, life's too short to waste time. Keep beautiful. Steve, Livy here in town? Bring it around. Say, that's swell. Yeah? What's swell about it? Well, you're in love with her, aren't you? It's your fiance. Oh, sure, sure. Now, don't get me wrong. Olivia's a great girl and she'll be a wonderful wife. But this isn't Boston. This is Gotham, served up on the half shell at Rising Weather. This is the land of wild oats and Greenwich Village and beautiful women. And I don't want any Boston strings tying me down. Hello, Pat. Hello, my lady. Better not let your father catch you. Now, we will start with the hand positions in the middle zone. Number one, the palm supine. Number two, the palm prone. Number three, the palm vertical. Percy, dear, the palm vertical should be raised in gentle terror. Remember as you move into the mood that you're with a cat. A cat? A nefarious scoundrel whose intentions are not honorable. I'm sure Byron's intentions are honorable, Lulu. Who? Hmm? She means Byron Jones. He's always making the palm vertical to me. But suppose Byron weren't out with you? I'd just like to see him out with anyone else. We're practically engaged. Does he know it? <laughs> come, come, come now, girls. Come, let's try it again. Patricia, Patricia. Now, how many times have I told you? You should be weak and wilting and timid, as if the very air around you were charged with peril. But that's Mandy Pamby, Lulu. I'm not afraid of anything. My dear, do you wish to be a star? A great star? Or do you wish to dispute the championship with Mr. James J. Jeffrey? Now, that's more like a lady. A lady? Patricia, life is a book of etiquette and rules. You're born a girl, but you have to learn to be a lady. Girls may be attractive to boys, but only ladies attract gentlemen, and only gentlemen are rich. You know those two new boys that are staying with me? Uh-huh. Suppose one of them were a millionaire. Suppose one of them were a Boston banker incognito. Oh, then he'd be in Boston being a banker. Oh, no, you're wrong. He might be right here, learning to paint or compose. As a matter of fact, my dear, he is right here. Swell light on this end. How about you? All right. This window looks out on somebody's roof terrace. This one looks up at heaven. Take it easy. You could pick onions on that kind of music. Can't seem to get this tune.
Patrice O'Neill, coming out of there. Oh, my gosh. I thought that song was original. Yeah, so did I. Hey, you. Who, me? I want to see you. You do? Right away. Oh, I'll be right over. Hiya. Hey, who are you? What's your name? I'm Byron Jones. Byron? Yeah, I'm a poet. You're a card. No, a bard. I'm one of the bards of Greg's greeting cards. I write verses for birthdays and Christmas and all that. You know, like, uh, uh, roses are red, I send them to you just to say on this day, I'll always be true. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, I'm Johnny Bennett. This Hi, is Steve Johnny. Davis. Hello, Hi. Steve. Look, where'd you hear my tune before? Oh, I never heard it before. Well, but you sang words to it. I made them up. Just like that. Sure. I can write poems faster than you can write music. You can, huh? Huh? Well, we'll see about that. Okay. Now we'll see how good you are. Do Oh, not only that, but I'm smart, too. I'm the only guy in the world that can rhyme orange. Orange? Yeah. Orange. Hey, that is a tough one. How do you rhyme orange? Oh, no, you don't. If I told you, I wouldn't be the only guy in the world anymore. <laughs> Look, I, I'm writing tunes, and I need words. What do you say we team up, Byron? Leave us get working and keep the muse perking. <laughs> I'll bet that's Eddie. Come here. Hi, Eddie. Come on in. Hey, fellas, this is Eddie Gaskin. Oh, yeah. I'll bet Lou sent you up here to invite the fellas to that chin dig tonight down in the restaurant. Do you usually ride that nag around the third floor? Oh, that's just a model. He's an artist. He lives right across the hall. Interesting. You sell your stuff? He sure does. He's got pictures all over the country in all the best places. Where? He's hanging in every pool, saloon, livery stable. All the best places. They are for his pictures. What kind of pictures do you do? He does calendars. Oh, girls. No, cows. Just cows? That's <laughs> all, oh, just cows. Contented cows, discontented cows, blue cows, blue cows. He's the bovine Botticelli. Well, how'd you happen to pick on cows? He's a little cow happy. He painted a picture of Pat O'Neill once. Boy, was she mad. What happened? Well, nothing much, really. She turned out kind of pretty. Except for the horns. You're in a bad way. He can't look a bottle of milk in the face anymore. They're trying to graduate into horses. Calendar. Seems like a good way to break in. Might try it myself. Just go see Mr. Ward. He's a president of Calendars Incorporated. Maybe he'll give you a job. But I don't know him. Oh. Well, he does. He'll take you down tomorrow and introduce you. Thanks, Eddie. You're a thoroughbred. Don't forget to call Olivia. I'll pay her a quick visit on the telephone, and then we'll settle down to a life of art. And thing. Hello? Hello, Libby. How are you, darling? I'm just fine, darling. Uh, how long are you going to be in New York? Don't stop, don't worry. I'm going back to Boston tonight. Oh! Oh, well, that's too bad. Doesn't give me any time to see you. You can see me, Steve. Night and day for the rest of your life, simply by going back to Boston with me to a wedding. Oh, but I can't, darling. You know I want to, but I've got to have a try at my art. Don't play Rembrandt with me, Steve. Rembrandt? We've been through this artist thing before. You had to go to Paris, remember? The girls caught on to you there, you had to go to London. When the ladies there got your number, you came running back to Boston. Oh, really, Lily, that's not fair. It certainly isn't. And now it's Greenwich Village. Well, this is the last time you're going to break out the plow to sow your wild oats. I'll be patient for three weeks. No more. Take fast, young man. But three weeks is all... But three weeks is all I'll need. Three weeks is all you'll get. Then back to Boston to be a banker and a husband. Shall we have tea? Well, I... I'm pretty busy. Oh, if you'd rather not. Oh, sure, sure, Libby. I'll meet you for tea. Four o'clock at Rector's? Four o'clock. You're the most wonderful girl I've ever known. I'd rather be the only one. Goodbye. Women. That's what I said. In her bonnet of blue, what a picture she'd make. No. Try it. 
In her bonnet of blue, what a picture she made. She was the belle of the bucket brigade. Come in. Hello, Pat. Hello. Hiya, Pat. This is Johnny Bennett, Patricia O'Neill. We just call her Pat. Uh, we've already met, in a way. Uh, Lulu sent up some tea for you. Oh, boy! Not for you, Byron. This is strictly a Boston tea party. Oh, I can take a hint. A house doesn't have to fall on me. Well, a house will if you don't hurry. Tassie's waiting for you downstairs. Oh. Uh, where did you know the other one? See? She's not back yet. Oh. Well, you don't have to look so disappointed. <laughs> I'm not. I didn't mean that. Then you'll have tea with me. I'd love to. How do you like your tea? Lemon and one sugar. And I saw you dance down there on the roof. You were pretty good. Thank you. You were really wonderful. Only I can't say things like that. Makes me blush. I'm a shy guy. Where'd you learn to dance like that? Oh, it was easy to dance to the music you were playing. What was it? One of my tunes. Beautiful. No, it was a song I could never finish. I was stuck with it until I saw you start to dance, and then it, it just kind of flowed out like champagne. You're about as shy as a brass band. Well, don't get me wrong. I really am. Well, what I mean is I... I... What you mean is you like me. Well, that doesn't sound strong enough, but on account of I'm shy, I'll settle for it. Anyway, thanks a lot. What for? Well, for letting me in your life, for being here, part of Greenwich Village in New York. What I can't figure out is how you can like leaving a palatial mansion in Boston and coming to a grubby place like Greenwich Village. Wait a second. I, I think you've got something wrong. I haven't any palatial mansion in Boston. I haven't got but a dollar to my name. Then it's Mr. Davis. Oh, Steve. Yeah. He's quite wealthy. Banking family. Very sophisticated. Been to Europe. London, Paris. Oh, don't you worry. Someday when you've written your songs, you'll be rich, too. I'm not worried. I don't even care. You don't care? No. Don't you want to be rich and famous? Well, if it goes with being happy. You see, all my life, ever since I was a kid, I've been full of music. Before I even know what to do about it, I had songs in my head. I used to hear them playing at night with full orchestra when I'd go to sleep. And even then, with a kazoo or an ocarina, when I was old enough, well, I'd play these tunes out for my mother didn't know what to do with me. Now, this is wonderful. A piano like this, to play to my heart's content. To write out some of these melodies that have been inside me. I can sit here and touch these ivory keys. And look up at the stars at night through this window. And they'll become my orchestra, playing with me. With all the strings and horns and harps of heaven join in a strange and wonderful symphony. That's beautiful, Mr. Bennett. You're beautiful, Pat. Thank you. Call me Johnny. I was just going to. You know what's happened to me since I saw you? What? How fast? Lump in the throat, hot and cold flashes. Maybe you've got the measles. Then yeah, maybe I. Yes. Say, I've got to write a jingle for the party tonight. Byron left these lyrics here. Will you help me with it? Sure, I will. We've got to impress Dilly. I met an old flame at the fireman's ball. How did it go? Well, that's what I want to know. Not this. That's good. Do it again. Oh, I met an old flame at the fireman's ball. She was so charming, so dainty and small. By the old hook and ladder, she hooked me right in. I felt her mischief begin. When she gave me the eye, how the sparks began to fly. Now my heart is on fire when she's in my arms. I can hear nothing but fire alarms, and it's thrilling to think she was willing to fall that night at the fireman's ball. In her bonnet of blue, what a picture she made. She was the belle of the bucket brigade, and she looked so demure by the old fire hose. 
I simply had to propose How my heart seemed to pound As I waltzed her round and round By the fifth time I kissed her I heard people call Why don't you two go and hire a hall? So we left for Niagara that very same night After the fireman's ball In his bright red suspenders He said, oh you kid what did I do? Well, you know what I did. I fell hook, line, and sinker for that so-and-so. How was the young girl to know? Oh, I thought he was blue, blue with his 23 skidoos. He gave me the hot foot, and I should have learned. Played with fire, and boy, I got burned. But if you was the truth on my knees, I would crawl back to the fireman's ball. There was Patsy, O'Leary, O'Toole, not six. All of them tried to win her away, but so did the thin fireman hadn't a chance. He never gave him a glance. She had eyes just for me, just the way it ought to be. So the mercy the man had a stir. All the shenanigans didn't save her. For was I who walked up with the bell of the frog. Down at the fireman's ball. Oh, never ever would have happened if she hadn't happened to be standing there. She was such a lovely creature. I could see just such a lovely love affair. And the band began to play the melody. I said, would you confess her dance with me? She was all a twitter, but she didn't disagree. How my heart seemed to pound as I walked around. I slipped a ring upon her finger and we went to linger underneath the moon. I could see that we were heading for an early wedding in the month of June. We'll have a lot of little places. We'll be singing praises as we bring them all. Now back to the fireman's ball. Back to the fireman's ball. Very good indeed. Didn't I tell you I had some interesting protégés? Uh, that one there, the, the one with the little blue hat. Patricia, you mean. She's very attractive. I'll have to keep my eyes on her. You'd better keep your eyes off her. Or I'll knock them out of their sockets. And what business is it of yours, may I ask? That Corrine happens to be my daughter. That's what business it is. And if I catch you filling her foolish head with foolish notions... Are you implying that I... No, 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 Dilly. He means the theater. Well, what's foolish about the theater? The theater, huh? Well, that's only for show-offs and brazen women. And no decent place for any self-respected man or woman. <laughs> I'm at the theater now. Ah, but... But you're an exception. But I still say... Oh, you say. You say. And I suppose it's better for the self-respect to sit around a fire station all day, just waiting for an alarm to ring. Just sitting there, hoping that somebody's house will be burned down, and then licking your chops that somebody's going to be toasted rare, medium, or well done. Hang it, man. I save lives. And we in the theater save souls. Boys, 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 don't spoil your appetite. Well, the food is coming. And for you, Matt, darling, corned beef and cabbage. Corned beef and... Oh, my dear, oh, my word, what an awful combination. Oh, dearly, darling, try it just once. I wouldn't mind trying it once, but it keeps repeating itself. All right, boys. Well, how do you like New York? Not as much as Boston. How is that so? Well, you have no Statue of Liberty. No, but we have the Cradle of Liberty, Manuel Hall. Ah, uh, you have no Palisades. Bunker Hill. At Trinity Church. Old North Church. Grant's too. Paul Revere. <laughs> you win. You forgot the one natural beauty that makes Boston a wilderness and New York a shining city. Hey, what's that? You. New York is a nice place to visit. Yes, it has quite a future, they say. It's got Fifth Avenue, Mr. Chauncey Depew. And the street that is known as Broadway. New York has a glamour. What is it? That makes every stranger so gay. New York is a nice place to visit. But it's also a nice place to stay. New York has its own pony factors. Where actors and bandy bills call. 
It's got diamonds and gravy and rosy O'Grady. It's even the family hall. It's gaudy and gaudy and gaudy. And people from Brooklyn may say, New York is a nice place to visit. But we say it's a nice place to stay. New York is a nice place to visit. But we say it's a nice place to stay. I want you to meet Mr. Dillingsworth. Dilly, this is the young man I was telling you about, the one Professor Garibaldi sent down from Boston. Mr. Bennett, Mr. Dillingsworth. Glad to know you, Mr. Bennett. Glad to know you, sir. He's a composer, Charles, a pupil of Garibaldi's, and very promising. I want you to listen to his tunes. Young man, it was nice knowing you. Good night. Uh oh, he'll listen to your tunes, Johnny. Really, Lulu? Tunes, darling. Tunes. Well, what's wrong with tunes? They give me dyspepsia. <clears throat> Babes in Toyland didn't give you dyspepsia. No, oh, but that was Victor Herbert. His music is immortal. And profitable. Mr. Dillingsworth, you young man. Is... Young man, I give you some advice. Free. Yes, sir? Stop writing tunes. Go back to your first love, uh, driving a beer wagon or bank clerking or whatever it was, and live out your life happily. And if I don't? Then poor Dilly will just have to listen to your tunes. Very well, Mr. Bender. When you have a score, a complete score, I'll do you the honor of listening to it. And I'll try and give you the pleasure of hearing it, sir. Now that I've had a sample, how about each and every dance? Do you always sample everything first? I'd like to sample Crepe Suzette with you alone and Maxine. You'll be too busy painting. Well, every artist has to have his inspiration. You mean she had his Mona Lisa, Goya his Duchess? And this had his mother. Seriously, Pat, you're just the model I want. The moment I saw you dancing on the roof, I knew I had to paint you. Uh, you haven't met my father. I don't want him to pose. No, and he doesn't want me to pose. If he heard you asking, he'd knock your block off. Listen, Pat, Eddie tells me that his calendar company is having a contest. A calendar contest. Calendar? Sure, they want something new, something fresh, something different. And there's a $500 prize for the best picture. 500 smackers? Pose for me, and if I win, it's all yours. Five hundred... Gee, I could get past that sterling silver speaking trumpet he's wanted so long. Then you'll do it? Uh-huh. But mum is the word. Byron. Mm-hmm? If you don't hold me closer, I'll get horse shouting all the way over there to you. Oh, I can hear you fine. Byron, you're so cold. I am. Hold me tighter. Like this. Please. Not, not in public. See? Everybody here got the tickets for the jamboree? <laughs> no, what jamboree? You mean you haven't heard about the Fireman's Benefit Jamboree at the Swiss Garden tonight of June the 30th? No. Beer. That's lunch. Maybe a moonlight stroll with your best girl. Or somebody else's. I'll take two. Two girls? No, two tickets. How much are they? Uh, a buck each. Well, I'm a little short. I'll take one now and pick the other one up later. Sure, sure. Shall we dance, my dear? I'm warning you. Keep that silly dilly away from me, daughter. Do you want her to be an ignorant Irishman like yourself? Well, that's better than being no Irishman at all. Oh, Matt, she needs grooming. You can't grow her up to be a fire chief. Matt, he's here. Who's here? Oh, Smogus brought himself. Foreman Olson. What? Now, Matt, take it easy. Olson, you spying snake, what are you doing here? Good evening, Mr. O'Neill. I just dropped by to wish you... Wish me bad sense. Well, the same to you. And if you're as good at fighting fires as you are at passing insults, you'd be the battalion chief by now. Now, now, O'Neill, just don't get a stroke. Man, your age shouldn't get so excited. You know I cannot be battalion chief until my engine company number 18 win the efficiency trophy. Oh, get out of here. And stop spying on better engine companies than your own pitiful crew of Athenas. As a matter of fact, if the yours come to me, O'Neill, that you and I may be tied on our efficiency record. So? I thought, uh, if it happened, we might just settle the issue with the Yamboree, with a contest. Contest? Why, I'll wrestle you, I'll fight you, I'll drink you under the table, or anything else you like to name. A tug of war, maybe? Tug of war, is it? Well, how can you tug a word of the jamboree? Well, why not? But, would you mean on the dance floor of the Swiss Garden? 
be used to uh, regulation sneakers. Oh, sneakers, is it? How did you hear that, man? A tug of war, he says. Agreed, Alston? Agreed. And we'll pull your scrawny little team clean over into the East River. It's a bargain. <laughs> tug of war. An engine company 24 the chap into the city. Where the square hits crazy. <laughs> I smell a rat, Matthew. You do that, but he's not a very smart one. <laughs> <laughs> Buy your dad that silver trumpet, you better sit still. Who knows what wonderful things may happen? 
The pattern and the picture. Both. Love to have you along, John Boy, but you know the old adage. Two's company and three isn't even a quartet. Wait a second. What? Steve, I don't like this. Write a letter to the Times. Oh, that's not funny. That's a nice girl. A very nice girl. To put it mildly, she's a dish. But she needs to be told about life. She needs to be told about Olivia. You better keep your nose out of my business. Yeah, but that is my business. And I don't like you going out with her when you're engaged to Olivia. Johnny, how could you think? Oh. Look, a fellow could change his mind. It would be better if you made up your mind. You wouldn't be jealous, would you? You bet I would. Too bad, too bad. Isn't it a shame that Pat prefers me? You know, I'd make any sacrifice for you, but say la vie, say la guerre. And now, if you'll excuse me, I'll be walking along. Hello? Oh, may I go with you, please? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Olivia. I'm glad to Hello, see you. Hello, Johnny. You seem to be happier to see me than see this. I was never so glad to see anybody in my life. Ah, <laughs> oh, thank you. I hope I haven't interrupted any important plans, Johnny. Who, me? I'm, I'm delighted you came, darling. Here I was going out all alone, and you arrived. <laughs> Won't you join us, Johnny? I'd love to. Oh, please. no, no. He can't. Uh, I mean, he has a date. You're going out with Pat, aren't you, Johnny? Huh? You're going out with Pat to the, uh, to the jamboree. Oh, oh, Pat. Oh, yeah, we have a date. <laughs> uh, we we're supposed to go to... I mean, we'll probably go Isn't to the... Isn't it the, the uh, Swiss Garden? Uh, yeah. Uh, I think that's what she said. Oh, I almost forgot to give you the, uh, the five dollars I owe you. Well, I'm uh, sure Pat's waiting for you, isn't she, Johnny? Oh, oh sure, yeah. I'm sure she's waiting. <laughs> You'll excuse me, Lydia. Oh, yes, Johnny. Have a good time. We always have a good time. Goodbye, Johnny. Shall we go, Steve? I have my aunt's carriage. Oh, that's wonderful. Simply wonderful, darling. So good to see you again. And, and what a surprise. <laughs> Why didn't you let me know you were coming? I prefer to steal up on my prey and catch the critter dead to right. What do you mean, Lydia? I think you know what I mean. Where are you taking me? Uh, Delmonico's. I want to be bohemian. Let's go to the place where Johnny's going. Oh, no. Uh, Johnny might be embarrassed. Johnny or you? Well, what have I got to do with it? Who is this girl, Pat? Patricia O'Neill. What's she like? Well, she... Well, she's not your type, naturally. She's just a... Uh... An ordinary girl? Well, yes. She's, uh... The quiet type? Not exactly, but, uh... Beautiful? Oh, not exactly, but, uh... Talented, perhaps. Not exactly, but, uh... What does she do? Well, she, she's just a girl. Uh, an artist model, maybe. She has been posing lately. Not for you, by any chance. Well, yes. Oh, I'm most anxious to meet her. I don't remember where Johnny went. There are a hundred beer gardens in New York. Oh, I do, in the Swiss Garden. <laughs> Everybody. Yeah, sure. Everybody having good time. <laughs> There's Odeo. Better go easy on that beer, O'Neill. Go away, you little pipsqueak. Well, I'm done him this time. And don't. Oh, good luck. <laughs> He's right about that beer, Matt. You may have a tug of war tonight. I can drink a barrel of beer and still pull the little square head and the whole of his company right off their legs with one hand. But, Johnny, I still don't understand what happened to Steve. In a minute, you're going to hurt my feelings. Oh, that would be very silly of you. I can't think of anyone I'd rather be with than you, but I still don't see why he didn't. Oh, well, I'm a lucky guy, Pat. You see, a friend blew in from Boston, and Steve had to... Well, you know... Well, it was very nice of you to take me into that job. Oh, I didn't want to. I fought against the whole thing. Steve, I said, now why should I take out the most beautiful, the most wonderful girl in New York when I come alone in the attic and play dominoes? But I finally gave in. Waiter. Pat! Johnny! Hi, 
Mike, there you surprised. <laughs> For the love of Mike. Hello, everybody. Hello. I would get you. There goes my hip. Now, this is where you learn to rhyme beer with here. <laughs> what are you doing here? Burst has gone from bad to worse. And so you're a waiter. Yeah. Tessie's a pretzel girl. Just for a couple of hours at night. Well, I have to live, you know. Not bad. Hey, and tips and big knuckle thrown in once in a while. Will it be beer? Yeah, I'll have the beer. Make mine a ginger beer. Okay. But Byron, put it in a real beer sign, huh? <laughs> oh, don't go away. I got a surprise for you. Well, come on, Tessie. What do you suppose he's up to? There's no telling. I told you lately I love you. Have I told you? That's one of your songs. Oh, Barnes, not only a waiter, he's a song plugger. I may be blinded by all of your charm.
say, what's the idea of nailing me? Am I that hard to take? Not at all. Well, you're already taken. What about that girl, Pat? Isn't she wonderful? That's what I'm afraid of. Remember, Libby used to tell me that someday when the right girl would come along, I'd start sending up skyrockets and get absent-minded? <laughs> I remember. Well, last night, I put out the clock and wound up the cat. Don't tell me that for once in his life, Steve told the truth. He said it was stuck on Pat. He sure did. Oh, Johnny, that's grand. I'm so happy for you. Oh, you don't know how happy it makes me. <laughs> Your lady friend from Boston certainly doesn't let me just settle on her feet. Oh, Olivia's always rather had her own way. Is Johnny part of her own way? I don't know what you mean. How long has he known her? Oh, they're old, old friends. What kind of friends? Well, you know. You men. You needn't cover up for him. Some men just like to play the field. Oh, now, look here. I didn't say that... She's very beautiful, isn't she? Yes. Takes after my mother's side, I'd say. Your mother? Hmm. Are you related? Cousins. Oh, but don't mention it. We never talk about it. It's a tiresome idea. But I thought... Steve, I have a confession to make. I thought you stood me up. Well, I wouldn't do anything like that to you. I just had to... <laughs> you know. Yes, I know. Relative. It's a lovely night to go dancing. Why waste it? It's a lovely night for a moonlight stroll. Come on. much nicer than dancing. Moonlight and the girl you love. Johnny says you go for the girls, and the girls sure go for you. All the girls in my life are you, and all nights are tonight. You kiss the blondie stuff, but it really is a lovely night. This was meant to be our night, until it got spoiled. If only Olivia hadn't come. Johnny was glad enough to see her. Anyway, you and I will have another lovely night together, just the two of us, without anyone spoiling it, and only the stars for company. Please don't. Pat. This is the only moment of our evening. Don't leave. I give you the mayor of New York City. Oh, wait a second. It's the mayor. Well, why do you care about the mayor? But it's the duty of every civic minded citizen to listen to the mayor. Besides, there's an election coming. But women can't vote. To be here with you tonight in the intrepid company. Steve? Oh, oh, hello, Libby. I've changed my mind. We're going to Delmonico. Oh, but we can't just walk out on the mayor. He isn't the mayor of Boston. Good night. Good night, Libby. Dilemma, the fine records of two fire companies. There's something wrong. I can feel it in my feet. Number 24, under Foreman O'Neill. And number 18, under Foreman Olsen. Are so mad that we could not pick either one to win the efficiency trophy. So, we shall let Foreman O'Neill and Foreman Olsen settle it between themselves by tossing a coin. Do you have a coin? Uh, well, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, if you gentlemen will step forward, please. Uh, wait a second, Your Honor. Tossing the coin is not a contest. Just to luck. We've agreed to settle it by tug of war, Your Honor. Done! Square away your teams! <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, my mistake. <laughs> All right, coach up, boys. Good luck, Pop. You know anybody who wants to bet against your dad? He loves me? Loves me not. He loves me. He loves me not. Can't that guy make up his mind? That's what I want to know. He loves me. He loves me not. He loves me. Oh, Byron, it took you so long to make up your mind. Hey, take it easy. When I'm with you, I get feeling all peculiar. My heart starts pounding and my pulse runs wild and my blood runs hot like a feverish. Gee, you ought to see a doctor. And then I start to tingle, and I hear bells in my ears. Fire bells? Wedding bells for you and for me. Oh, Byron, I thought you'd never ask me. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> He's forgotten. 24 companies never lost a tug of war since I've been foreman. Hey, look. 
Come on, you fellas, take a pack ten dollars here or old two keys. Who wants to pack your cab back here? Ten dollars here, ten dollars more, you fellas. Come hey, on, wait a you. minute. Who are these three elephants? You mean Jordan and Jansen and Jorgensen? I don't care how you yawn them. The ringers. You are still regular signed up members of my company. Since when? Since yesterday. Commissioner, I object. I'm sorry, O'Neill, but they have passed all tests. Oh, right, right. <laughs> First team to pull that handkerchief to its own marker wins. Get ready. Go. The best man won. Best man, my foot. Just remember, my first official visit as battalion chief, I want to see those three elephants go up and down that extension ladder. Be for everybody. Come on. Byron. What happened to you? We're engaged. <laughs> oh, well, congratulations. Well, it's such a take leave you now. Oh, but it's so cool and lovely on the terrace. Let's sit a while. How many's past me that time? I'm beginning to think you don't like me, Matt. Oh, why would you be saying that? Well, why did you have to drag me home and away from the party so early? These people are killing me, Lulu. Are you saying that you're getting too old for parties? I never said anything of that kind. I just said me feet had me, that's all. And I was about to say goodnight to you. Uh, you know, I've had such a lovely time at the party that you can kiss me goodnight. Me? Come on, right here, hmm? Well, maybe it is just as well that we came home. Gave Pat a chance to get out from under your ego eye. Yes. Good night. What did you say? You know, it's quite possible that one of these days, Patricia is going to get married. She is not. Matthew, you may as well get used to the fact that you may lose Pat. Lose her? Over me dead body. <laughs> your dead body won't help if she's in love. Love? Oh, that's a lot of nonsense. I'd like to see the scallywag that would put such a silly idea into her head. I'd knock the stuffing out of it. <laughs> you couldn't knock the stuffing out of love. Oh, don't be saying that, Lulu. She, she wouldn't do that. She wouldn't do that and leave her poor old father alone. You wouldn't have to be left alone, Matt. Huh? Oh, no, you don't, you scheming female in your pitfalls. You're a wanton woman. You don't catch me falling into your clutches. Have you no shame? Well, you sprung your trap, but I'm not in it. Then I'll 
just have to set my traps again. Lovely night to go dancing. Lovely night to dance with you. Seems to me I hear music. Is it music? Or is it my heart that's singing? Time is right for romancing. Starry light shines above. Lovely night to go dancing. But it's a much better night to fall in love. You seem to be very happy. I am happy. Why not? Yes, why not? Thank you very much for a very lovely evening and good night. Well, wait a minute. What's your hurry? It's getting late. Oh, it's only 12.30. I don't know about you, but I had a wonderful time. I could see that you did. Well, didn't you? Yes. Miss Radford is very charming. Oh, Olivia, she's wonderful. It's all to the earth. Oh. As a matter of fact, I don't know a finer girl in the world than Olivia. Except you. It's very nice of you to say so. Oh, is something wrong, Pat? No, nothing's wrong. Nothing at all. Oh, good. Well, let's go out again tomorrow night. I have a previous engagement. Oh. Well, uh... Well, how about the next night and we'll go to the Nickelodeon? Well? Well, what? Well, all right, only... Only what? Wouldn't you rather take Olivia? <laughs> Gosh, no. Olivia's not exactly the Nickelodeon type. Well, of all the nerve... Patricia O'Neill! If you don't stop that lolly Julian and come up to your bed, I'll come down there and take my fist to that young wimp. Oh, my gosh, good night. Good night, Pat. Have I told you lately I love you? Hello, Lulu. What are you doing out here? Oh, I came out to watch the stars, but I see they're in your eyes. <laughs> What'd you say? Oh, I was just thinking how wonderful it would be to be young again. And in love. And in trouble. In trouble? They're the same thing. <laughs> well, I'm not in trouble. But I am in love. I guess. Have you asked her yet? Well, I told her you mean. Oh, no, you usually ask the young lady to marry you, Johnny. Marry me? Oh, I didn't. I mean, uh, well, how could I? I'm broke. I, I couldn't afford it. <laughs> Two women as cheaply as one. If they're in love, and if they live in my house. Yeah, but I haven't anything to offer. Hmm? Only thing she'd marry you for, if she's in love, is yourself. That's all. That's all that matters. Yeah, well, I don't know, though, Lulu. If I were you, I wouldn't let any grass grow under my feet. Somebody might beat you to it. But now, what if you're wrong? My dear boy, I may not always be right, but I'm never wrong. <laughs> All right, I'll do it. I'll ask her at the Nickelodeon. Good. Good night, Cupid. John, that's bow and arrow showing again. of Lulu's, the contest. Sure, I won the calendar contest. Look at it, 500 simoleons. Congratulations, Steve. The rich are getting richer all the time. Just think of it, my calendar girl will be hanging all over the country. Did you tell Pat yet? Oh, I forgot, that's her check. Pat! Pat! Here I am. Hello, Johnny. I just heard. Isn't it wonderful? You bet it is, and that's not all. I'm going to introduce New York to its new calendar girl. Rectors, Churchill, pastors, Delmonicos. We'll blaze a lobster trail up and down Broadway. I've always wanted to go to all those wonderful places. Oh, oh. What's the matter? Oh, I'm sorry, Steve, I forgot. 
Johnny and I have a date tonight. What kind of a date? What were you going to do? Oh, wasn't anything. We were just going to the Nickelodeon. Oh, those tintype flickers will make you dizzy. They'll ruin your eyes. Let's all go on the town together. Make it a threesome. We ought to have a celebration. Sure. How's about it, John boy? Well, if that would rather. Oh, I would. I would. Fine. Then we'll start at eight. Pop's on night duty at the station, so we can really have a whirl. Oh, golly, I've got lots to do. I'd better get ready. Shall I dress up? Of course. You'll be the belle of the town, Pat. From now on, you have something to live up to. You'll have your picture in every house in the land. Oh, and here's the check. It's all yours. A solid silver trumpet. Oh, gee, Pop will be thrilled. See you later. Are you ready, my friend? Gee, Steve, you look terrific. Always terrific, son. Always the epitome. Let's roll. Oh, wait a second. Hmm? I feel kind of... Well, maybe I'm not dressed well enough. That's your best suit, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Hmm. That's the only suit I got. Well, that's all right, kid. Let's go. The carriage I ordered is probably waiting. I want to stop off and pick up orchids for the lady. Carriage? You got orchids? Nothing but the best for Patricia tonight. Steve, I'm not going. What? You two go ahead without me. Oh, come on, Johnny. We can squeeze you by the maitre d's. We can take a corner take. No, I'm not going. You and Pat go and have a fine time. Well, what'll I tell her? Well, tell her... Tell her I had to wait. That I was expecting a phone call or anything. A phone call? All right. I'll tell her. Steve. Yes? Look, Steve, uh, don't ever do anything to hurt her. I never hurt him, kid. I just stun him. to me. Johnny, you trust Pat, don't you? Of course I do. But I don't trust Steve. Oh, go to bed and stop your fretting. You're acting like a little fool. Everything is going to be all right, Johnny. Believe me. Good night, boy. Good night, Lou. Good night. Champagne second, or do you love champagne second and me first? That's not right. Let's see, do you love champagne? You're wonderful, Pat. You kissed me. No fair kissing a girl when she's trying to find out about me and champagne. I just love champagne, especially when I'm thirsty. You know how I feel about you? Do you love me first, or do you love champagne second? I adore you. That's fine. That settles it. Johnny doesn't adore me. Johnny only adores telephone calls from Boston. Let's get away from all this. You've been every place, haven't you, Steve? You've traveled all over the place. Yep. Have you ever been to Niagara Falls? Why, Angel Eyes? I always wanted to go to Niagara Falls on my honeymoon. Honeymoon? Mm -hmm. What's it like, Steve? What's Niagara Falls like? 
As far as I'm concerned, it's just a lot of water going over a cliff. Is that so? I want to go home. Oh, all right, but let's go to the Sanctuary first, huh? Nope. I said I want to go home, and when I say I want to go home, I go home. Stop pushing. She wants to go home. Sweet sorrow. Tomorrow. Johnny, Johnny, Johnny. What Johnny, do you Johnny. mean staying out so late? I ought to spank you. Cut it out, Steve. You got a lot of nerve keeping her out till this hour. Oh, look who's talking. It's none of your business. Your father was home. He whipped the tar out of you with a razor strap. Wait a minute. You can't talk to Pat like that. That's right. You can't talk to Pat like that. I can't, huh? Well, I happen to know. Shut that. up. You better run along like a good boy. Take your hands off me, Steve. She's a big girl now. She's old enough to take care of herself. I said take your hands off me. Come on. Johnny. All right, Johnny. That's the way you feel? That's the way I feel. Night, Pat. Wait a minute. Get away from me and leave me alone. I don't need you to help me. You go help your old Olivia. I can take care of myself, see? You can take care of yourself like a baby when it comes to guys like Steve. You're just jealous, Steve. Pat, there's something you gotta know. You're jealous of his painting and winning the prize and everything. Listen, you're wrong, Pat. I'm not jealous of anything except you. Don't you understand how I feel about you? You're it. You're the one. You're the only thing in my life that means more to me than even music. Boston Blarney. Go tell it to Olivia. Olivia? What do you mean? Olivia doesn't mean anything to me. Next thing you'll tell me, you don't even know her. Of course I know her, but only as a friend. Assistant. Well, Steve and... Oh, I see. Now she's Steve's girl. Well, she is Steve's girl. You contemptible. Get away from me and leave me alone. Get out of here. Get out. I never want to see you again. All right. That's the way you want it, Pat. Calendar girl? No. She hasn't much modesty, has she? Perfectly shocking. Mm, some figure. And she doesn't mind showing it. Oh, what do women think of next? Oh, that's me. Hey, Calendar girl. Beautiful doll. Mama, find me that. Hey, fellas, look. It's the calendar girl. The time you want to get off that calendar, I'll show you a real date. Are there any more at home like you? I with next to no clothes on. I didn't. I didn't pose like that at all. Steve changed the picture after it was finished. Oh, it was Steve, was it? Oh, Pop. 
I only did it so I could win the prize money for you. I wanted to get you this. Well, well. <laughs> Do not the pressure! Oh, oh, that was a sweet thing for you to do, Patsy. And I believe what you did was done in innocence. But as for that thief fellow, that double-crossing, worthless young no-good, preying on a maiden's innocence, I'll beat him oh. the first pub within an inch of his life. Oh, Bob, please. Bob, don't do it. Calendar, indeed. Well, how can he get excited over a calendar when he doesn't even know what month it is? He's going to beat up on Steve. But why? It's a perfectly beautiful calendar. It brings out your personality charmingly. But most charmingly, my dear, that's why I'm here. You know what I'm going to do? Please, Lulu, <laughs> help me. I will, dear. Come on. If tell Steve to hide. I'll try to stop your fall. Bye. I must say, darling, I was honestly overwhelmed when I saw your uh, art. Didn't think I could do it, eh? I'm the hottest thing on canvas in this town right now. <laughs> Painting calendars, you mean. The time is up, you know, Steve. I expected you to return with me. But if you'd rather paint, I... Wait, Libby, I didn't say that. Steve! Paul! Hello. Steve, you've got to get out of here. Why? It's the painting, the calendar. My father's on his way up here to kill you. What? I couldn't help it, Steve. His temper is out of control. You've got to hide someplace. You ought to work things out better than that, Steve. You've had enough experience by now. This isn't funny, Olivia. You don't know my top. Steve will be lucky if he can crawl out of here. Matt? Matthew O'Neill? Turn yourself right around and march away from my house. Out of my way! Have you seen the calendar? I have, and it's beautiful. It's a disgrace and shaper. Now, just a minute. Don't get so personal. Suppose it wasn't your daughter. That's a beautiful picture. You uncultured old baboon. You don't know art when you see it. It's a fine influence you've been on me, child. And she posts for it in your house. And I'm proud of it. Are you still finding out that your daughter has legs? <laughs> it's about time some artist did something about it. Women do have legs, you know, and they're very beautiful. Woman, you're deep brain. And you're blind. You don't know beauty when you see it. Out the way, I'm gonna threaten you. Now, Matthew, you get out of my house. Woman, stand aside. I'm gonna murder it. I'll call the police. Well, call him. I'll call him. Close the damper. Uh, make a lot of smoke down there. Try to find something to burn in the stove. Yes, yes, those things will be fine. Here he comes. Go back. But there's no place to hide in there. You can always hide behind my skirt. Go ahead. I'll see if I can stop him. Please, Pop, you don't understand. It takes very little understanding. Oh, wait a minute. There'll only be trouble. Trouble? There may be murder. Set aside. Listen to me. There's something I have to tell you. What is it? We're engaged. Ah. Engaged? You know, to be married. What? Uh, you and Steve? Yes. <laughs> me funny little Colleen. Why didn't you tell your old daddy? You didn't give me time. Well, well. What do you know, me little girlie? We thought you might be angry. Me angry? Now, how silly. Have you ever seen me lose me temper? Well, maybe it is art. You do kind of look like your mother a little. You're a talented fellow, Steve is. And I always wanted a son. Well, I'll have to congratulate me prospective son-in-law. Oh, no, Pop. Not now. Not now. Now, now come along. You wouldn't have him think we're snobs just because we're from New York and he's only from Boston. Now, come along now. Engaged, is it? Why, yes. Uh, this, is, this is my fiancée, Miss Radford. What? Oh, I'm afraid there must be some sort of mix-up. Nothing to what there's going to be. Well... Making a fool of me, daughter. Taking advantage of her ignorance. Tricking her into the picture. Cheating with her affections. Do you see now? But a snake in the grass, this snake in the grass has turned out to be. Indeed, I do. I'll teach you, young wimp. I'll show you what. Let's 
24. I'll take care of you later. Don't get scared. It's just a trick of blues. I want to talk to you. going a bit too far? I'm sorry, Pat. You're sorry? What have I done to Johnny? You better get out of here before Pop comes. How can we get out without his name? Come on, I'll show you. This way, hurry up. That's where I live. Just go right through my room and downstairs, and I hope you'll both be very happy. Oh, thank you so very much, Pat. This way to Boston, Steve. Yes, Libby. See, Jeff. I have wonderful news for you. Yes? No time to be crying. I've decided to stage a musical comedy, Calendar Girl. And the real Calendar Girl is going to be in it, naturally. Thank you. And the score, Pat. The score is written by a brilliant young composer. I can hear it now. Opening night, curtain time. The best people are waiting in the audience. Only the best people. The orchestra tunes up. Doctor, mounts the podium, takes out his baton. <clears throat> and after an expectant hush, Have I told you lately, you thrill 